Hello viewers, hope you are all well. Let's start with question number one. Supply chains must be viewed cross-functionally as a whole. This is because A. Cross-functional teams work better than individuals and can drive more improvement. B. Changes in one area will impact other areas and companies, negating the positive impact of any change. C. Most companies now work in a cross-functional manner. D. Communication tools make it easier to work cross-functionally. The correct answer is B. The supply chain needs to be viewed in its entire entirety. In order to accomplish this, cross-functional teams need to be established to not only cross-functional boundaries but the boundaries of companies. Otherwise, the changes which occur in one company may negatively impact another in the supply chain. An example of this is inventory. If company A reduces its inventory unilaterally, its supplier base will end up the excess inventory caused by the slowdown in purchases caused by the inventory reduction. With an effective supply chain, company A and its suppliers and their suppliers would work cooperatively to reduce the overall inventory in the entire supply chain. All companies would benefit. Question number two. Moving to an extended enterprise from a multi-dysfunction requires A. Better functional managers B. Improved software C. Upfront investment D. More experienced employees The correct answer is C. Moving an enterprise to become a highly competent extended enterprise requires an upfront investment in training, cross-functional skill development, upgraded software and hardware, automated equipment, team development, and travel in order to be successful. Question number three, which of the following would be the most likely consequence of not sharing the gains resulting from supply chain improvements with all the stakeholders? A. Banks will not make loans to the company. B. Government agencies will require more regulatory compliance. C. Employees will leave for better run companies. D. Reliable, high-quality suppliers will remove themselves from the supply chain. The correct answer is D. The most likely consequence would be that the best suppliers would leave the supply chain if they believe their involvement was not being rewarded. If the supply chain wins, the gains must be shared. Otherwise, there is no incentive to participate. Question number four. Different customers value different aspects of the supply chain depending on their business strategy. A mass market retailer would value A. Data warehouse capability B. Cost efficient supply chain C. Fast supply chain D. High quality supply chain The correct answer is B. A mass market retailer such as Walmart would value a highly efficient supply chain which would minimize cost with expected quality for their market place. They would not value quality that was for higher end merchants, example Tiffany's, as their customer base would not be able or willing to purchase the higher end merchandise. The high level of quality would not provide customer value. Question number five. The goal of supply chain management is to add value to the customer. Different customers recognize, recognize value differently, depending on their business strategy. Which of the following would be most valued by an online retailer? A. Overnight delivery at low cost. B. Low cost merchandise. C. Data warehouse capabilities. D. Credit card trans transparency. The correct answer is A. Online retailers business strategy is to provide convenience to customers who shop via the internet. As a result, convenient competitively priced shipping options provide the customer with a value. Question number six, an ice cream manufacturer owns the dairy farms which supplies the milk. It also owns the milk processing plant which blends the cream. The ice cream manufacturing and packaging plant and the trucks which make the deliveries to the various customers. This would be an example of A. Lateral supply chain B. Horizontal supply chain C. Vertical supply chain D. North-South supply chain 
The correct answer for this one is C. When a company owns all or most of the supply chain entities, it has a vertical supply chain. The primary reason to have a vertical supply chain is to establish control over the supply chain. Question 7. The corporate strategy and the supply chain strategy needs to be aligned to achieve success. If a retailer has a corporate strategy of everyday low prices, then which of the following supply chain strategies would be most appropriate? A. Rapid delivery supply chain B. Highest quality supply chain C. Highly efficient supply chain D. Lowest manufactured cost supply chain The correct answer is C. Everyday low prices would indicate that the supply chain needs to be highly efficient so non-value added activities are eliminated from the supply chain while having low cost manufacturing is a part of that efficient supply chain. It would not ensure the rest of the supply chain is efficient. Functions such as inbound and outbound logistics would also have a tremendous impact. Question number 8. Supply chain management is always trying to balance competing goals for the benefit of the customer. Which of the following best represents those competing goals? A. Best quality delivered quickly to the customer. B. Most cost efficient and best quality products delivered to the right place. C. Most effective communication tools ensuring real-time information. D. Right product at the right time and place for the right price. The correct answer for this one is D. Supply chain management ought to be all about giving the final customer the right product at the right time and place for the right price. When any one of these aspects become overweight for the customer, the supply chain will not be competitive. Question number 9. The concept of the customer can be complex when talking about a supply chain. The term customer in the supply chain is the A. Distributor to the retailer B. Buyer from the manufacturer C. Consumer of the final product D. Retailer to the consumer The correct answer is C. The consumer of the final product is the customer for the purpose of explaining the supply chain. In the case of the retail supply chain, the consumer would be the customer. It is an important concept because the supply chain must think of itself as a whole supplying the final customer. Question number 10. The way to reduce the bullwhip effect in a supply chain is to A. Use sophisticated forecasting techniques. B. Use actual orders rather than forecasted demand. C. Use forecasted demand directly fed back from the retailer. D. Use actual order to forecast error. The correct answer is B. In order to reduce the bullwhip effect, actual orders need to be promulgated through the supply chain. If all the supply chain partners are using actual orders through the retail registers as their demand, the bullwhip effect will be reduced. Question number 11. Making to a forecasted demand is called A. Predictor uh, system B. Tug system C. Pull system D. Push system the answer for this one is obviously D. A push system means that the supplier is pushing the product to meet a forecasted demand. Generally, they are producing to stock and pushing the stock into the supply chain. Because demand is forecasted, each supplier is buffering the demand to protect against uncertainty of the demand. Question 12. Changing from a push system to a pull system is a real challenge. The major challenge is to a. Reduce inventory without affecting customer satisfaction. B. Realign the communication protocol between partners. C. Increase inventory to improve customer satisfaction. D. Establish the actual orders. The correct answer for this one is A. When the supply chain changes from a push system, forecasted demand, to a pull system, actual orders, the inventory buffer creating the bullwhip needs to be removed from the supply chain. This process needs to be gradual so as not to negatively impact the customer. Question number 13. Besides the ongoing cost of carrying inventory in the supply chain, one of the great dangers of carrying extra inventory in the supply chain is A. Obsolence B. Warehousing costs C. Price changes D. Closeouts the correct answer for this one is A. Because inventory is carried throughout the supply chain, extra inventory can become obsolete if the retailer discontinues a product. The entire supply chain may be caught off guard forecasting demand. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टीन द टर्म डिमांड ड्रिवेन कैन बी डिफाइंड एज मेकिंग ए जस्ट वॉट द कस्टम फोरकास्ट डिमांड बी जस्ट वॉट द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सेंटर सी जस्ट वॉट इट इज डिमांडेड बाय द प्रेजिडेंट डी जस्ट वॉट इज नीडेड फॉर एन ऑफर द करेक्ट आंसर इज डी डिमांड ड्रिवेन कंपनीज प्रोड्यूस ओनली वेन दे हैव एन एक्चुअल ऑर्डर क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टीन डिफरेंट प्रोडक्ट्स रिक्वायर डिफरेंट सप्लाई चेन स्ट्रेटेजीज प्रोडक्ट्स दैट हैव लॉन्ग लाइफ साइकल्स लो मार्जिन एंड लिटिल वेरिएशन लाइक पैकेज फूड्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल रिक्वायर अ सप्लाई चेन दैट स्ट्रेसिस प्रिडिक्टेबिलिटी एंड लो कॉस्ट परफॉर्मेंस मेजर्स फॉर दिस फंक्शनल प्रोडक्ट सप्लाई चेन वुड बी ऑल ऑफ द फॉलोइंग एक्सेप्ट ए एक्सेस बफर कैपेसिटी B. Minimum minimal inventory. C. High manufacturing utilization. D. Low cost design. The correct answer for this one is A. Functional products have product demand that is very predictable. They are easy to forecast, so the supply chain is based on high manufacturing utilization, large volumes, at low margins. The designs for these kinds of products are fairly stable, with product extensions rather than completely new products. excess buffer capacity would not be an indicator for this type of product viewers if you find value in this video please consider subscribing to my channel and pressing the bell icon thank you